Hi guys, Samantha from Do Some Tutorials here, and today I'm going to show you how to create a beautiful pendant using a hidden magic technique and a Marcus Chef Mukumagana technique and doming techniques. So, to start with, you're going to need some Primo and you're going to want to cut those into triangles. So, I'm using ultramarine Primo, white Primo, another white Primo, and purple Primo. And then you will create these two Skinner blades, and then from there we can move on in our project. If you don't know how to make a Skinner blend already, I do have a link to it in the description uh, below the video, so check that out. Um, and we can proceed with our project. There we are, and that is what you should end up with at the end. So then you'll take each one, and just fold it like so, and keep folding it down as much as you possibly can to make it thin. And then you're going to roll it through the past machine the opposite way you have been for the skin of it. So you get a longer blend, like so. Then take it down a few settings and roll again. So you end up with a nice long blend, like so. And then start from the light end and start rolling. Like so. And just continue the whole way up the blend and you'll repeat that with the purple one as well. Keep in mind you can change the colours in this tutorial uh, to whatever colours you want. I mean I'm trying to do a um, winter themed project here but if you wanted something that was more spring themed you could use some greens maybe some pinks and a leaf stamp so play around with it and see what you want okay and then repeat with this one okay and here is what you should have after that then you want to take each one and you want to start reducing that down So. You want to be able to cut out probably around five pieces. Now the amount of clay that I used for each colour, so for the blue I used probably about one fourth of a block of Prima. Same for the white, so two fourths of a block of white, one fourth of a block of purple and one fourth of a block of ultramarine. And you can see this reduces very quickly. And I have it almost to the right length. You can just give it a gentle stretch. There we go. Then just chop off these ends. And reduce this one to the same length. Okay. Then we're just going to chop it into lengths. Like so. Okay, now I just need to stretch those a little bit more. There we are. Now we have those all together, you want to take some and you want to stack it like so, so that it's almost in like a checkerboard pattern. Like so. Okay, then I'm just going to squish that together. And then I want to take the corner over here and I'm going to squish down, flattening it out. Then 
use your roller to help with that. And you can always just squish that back down if it's starting to get a little bit too long. And just continue flattening that out. see what that looks like and that actually is quite a nice cane on its own you can imagine if you maybe rolled that up so let me just roll that up very clear I'm just gonna cut that you can see that would be actually quite a nice cane so you could consider doing that but today we are going to make we can make garnet out of it And I want to just have it about as thick, excuse me, as my thickest setting on my pasta machine. So I'm just going to stretch it out a little bit more and then roll it out on my thickest setting. Like so. Then take some metal leaf and I'm going to be using some silver metal leaf. You can use any colour you want. tricky to work with. There we go. And I'll take one more piece as well. There we go. And if you have any little spots you can always just take some pieces stick that down over the spot. Like so. Because you want the entire area to be covered in metal leaf properly. Okay, and then when you're done with that, trim away excess. Like so. There we go. And then I'll lift that up. Just smooth around those sides to get rid of that excess. And I'm going to bring over my texture stamp of choice. I'm going to be using uh, this texture stamp from Melanie Mule really nice kind of spiderweb texture. Let me just show you the black pattern there. It's kind of supposed to be a spiderweb pattern, pattern but I thought it looked very similar to kind of like fractured glass. So I thought it would be quite appropriate for this project. So then take that and put it metal leaf side down and then I'm just going to use a piece of paper so that this doesn't stick to my fingers and I'm going to press this firmly into the stack starting from one end and working my way up like so okay. then when you're done try to keep it in the texture stamp <clears throat> and lift the texture stamp up because these ones actually stick to the tile which is really nice okay. and then you put it the other way around and just press nice and hard to get it stuck to table or the ceramic tile that you're using and you shouldn't need a release agent because of the uh, metal leaf there you, go. you can see this texture stamp actually lifts up a lot of that metal leaf for you which is quite nice if you don't want that you can always put a release agent in We'll leave most of it in these gaps, which is quite nice. And then just take your, your tissue blade and 
gently start to shave. And now it might not end up with a huge amount of um, metal leaf at the end. It's just supposed to be a light accent. So just try to keep your blade nice and controlled and shave across the surface. And you could always replace the metal leaf with another colour of clay, uh, such as black. Uh, you could use silver clay as well, that would also work. But I wanted to go with the metal leaf so that we have a slight um, amount of it in here. You can see we I went a little deep here, uh, but if you can control your blade well enough, you will end up with it pretty much in the gap in the uh, indented parts of the texture, leaving a really nice effect. There we go. Okay, and here is what it should look like towards the end. Then, take a piece of plain printing paper and give it a really nice burnish. Just to get that pattern flattened out. I just want to mention this, you can always just go and put this into a uh, sink of warm soapy water and just scrub it out with a toothbrush and that will work just fine. This is what we're left with. See how pretty that is. It's got a slight sheen to it in some areas. I made a little accident over there, but for the most part, it came out really well. So that is our first veneer. What we can do with the leftovers in the meantime, is we can just, let's decide which way I want to roll this. I'm going to roll this one metal leaf inside. Stick that together. And this one I'm going to do the opposite way, I'll roll it with the metal leaf on the outside. And switch that as well. And then I'm just going to cut that. You can see you have a nice simple cane with the leftovers that you can use for wherever you want. So we might use that later on in the project, we'll see. Okay. Now I'm just going to take those that I've made and I'm just going to squish them together like so into a round. And this is not going to be a professionally made cane, it's just essentially a leftover cane where we're just taking a bunch of interesting patterns and we're putting it together to create something interesting. There we are. So that's something we could definitely use later on in the project. So let me just bring that up for you to see up close. So for our next step, we're going to take a Skinner blend between some silver and pearl white Prima. It's done the exact same way as before. And you're going to fold that in half again, like we did before. And you're going to run that through your pasta machine. Like so. I'll take it down a few settings. And I'm just going to trim off the section here where I have a little bit of staining from the pasta machine. And there we go. Nice long blend. Now, the difference with this one is we're going to be making a Skinner Blend plug which is a little different from a Skinner Blend um, bullseye cane which is what we made earlier what you're going to do is you're just going to fold this like so the whole way up the length and it doesn't matter which end you start with 
just want to continue doing this the whole way up the length, squishing out air bubbles as you go. Okay, then when you've got something that looks like this, you're going to squish it down, like so. And it does not have to be perfect. Um, we're not going to be building a cane with it, so if the um, blend between the pearl white and the silver is not perfect, that is perfectly fine. You just want to get it down. Because we're going to be doing a semi mica shift from Kumegano with this. And there we are. And then I like to just trim off some ends, or not actually, no, we won't do that. What you want to do though is you want to flatten that out and see if you can see any air bubbles on the surface. And I don't see any. So now we're ready to move on to dusting it with some cornstarch. And I'm going to, you want to dust both sides. So I'm going to just dust this one. And this is just going to prevent it from sticking in our stem. Actually, just dust the one side. If you're using a texture stamp, dust both sides. But today I'm going to be using a core roller, so I don't need to dust both sides. I just want to dust uh, the one side. The side that we're going to be rolling the texture on. And I'm just going to lengthen that out. Okay, and then just stick down one end. And I'm going to be using this core roller. And I got it from Linda's Art Spot. She's got a nice selection of core rollers, actually. I'm just going to continue rolling up the length. The softer the clay is, the easier it is to roll. There we go. And I'm just going to trim off these edges so that they don't get in the way. And then I'm going to just gently shave these edges. And you want to go fairly deep so that you can start getting that um, skin and blend. And I'm just going to do a mic shift on this side and I've made it thick enough that I can actually try out both sides to see which one I like the best. And I'm going to just try out the other side now. Stick that down. Make sure to give it a dust of cornstarch. Same thing again. Okay. And I just rolled over it again because that time I didn't get as nice a uh, cut as I would have liked. There we go. And just shave that off. And there we go. Just take nice long controlled slices across the surface and you'll end up with something quite pretty. And you can use any colour metallic clay you want. Completely up to you. And then when you're done, you're just going to burnish with some plain printing paper, just like you did with the Makume Garn. Okay. 
there we go. Got a nice frosty looking piece of clay. And I like that better than the one that we had on the other side. That paired with that looks quite nice. Okay, so then you're going to need some cutters. So I'm using the largest one. Then you skip down two, and you take the next one. Then you skip down two, and you take the next one. And that's from my full set of rounded uh, squares set. And this is what we're going to be using to cut out what we need to do. start with this one and we'll be able to cut out something pretty good from there. Now I just want to make sure that this is the same thickness. So take your leftover bits from there, squish that up and roll it into a sheet. And I've rolled this out to about a millimetre thick as this is about a millimetre thick too. Excess. And I run this through on the thickest setting on the plastic machine, which is about two millimeters thick. Okay. Then I'm going to take this one and roll it through that setting as well. Take it down one. So, same with this one. Now all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get them to about the same thickness. I could take it down to three. There we are. And this one I'll take down to three as well. And there we go. They're both exactly the same thickness now. Once you've got them, same thickness, you want to position it in a way that you like. It's almost a pity to cut this for you. I think I'm going to cut it about there. I think. Press down, nice and firm. Lift up. Take that out of the way. And that is your first piece. You lift that straight up, put it to the side. Now you're going to take this one, press that down. We're going to take the next cutter down. We're going to choose a spot that we like. And press. Lift up, put it to the side. Side. Grab this one again, and we're going to take the smallest one and we're going to decide whereabouts we're going to cut. Cut down, lift up, and put to the side. Then you're going to want something round to dome on. Be using this doming tool, and you're going to place your largest one in the middle of that tool, and gently press around those sides to get it to stick. And I just see that there's a little spot there that I just want to see if I can trim up. And that needs to go in the oven for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature. And in the meantime, these will sit out because what we want to do is we want to bake this. And once it's baked, we will position this on it so that it fits. Bake that and then do the same with this one so that they get the right dome. But so that if you don't position it in the right spot the first time around, you can move it around. Because if you try to put these two on, these three on top of each other, all at the same time, if you don't get it perfect the first time around, you're going to have to recut a different piece. And that's just going to end up with a lot of wasted clay. So, wait, 
bake the piece first and then proceed to uh, put it on top. Okay, and here it is our star oven. I took it off of the uh, metal doming thing and it is still pretty warm and you can see that the colours have changed. I'm going to bring over the other veneer so you can just see that. You can see that that does have a little bit of a colour change, definitely. And now when you take it off of that metal doming tool, please be careful. It is very hot when it comes out of the oven. Uh, the metal tool and the polymer clay. So I'm just going to put that to the side for it to cool. And we are going to work on the backing. So I want to show you a cool technique. You just go take all of your leftover clay. It's all bunched up into one piece like this. And you just want to squeeze that and roll it out into a log. So, and just begin to twist. And you can do this with any leftovers you want. Okay. And you just want to get nice and twisted because then it's just going to mix those colours a little bit more together and it's going to make it more interesting when we do what we're going to do. And just squish that back up together into a one piece one nice thick piece there we go okay then you can use your roller to start rolling that into a slab you want that to be fairly thick probably around two millimeters thick at least if not thicker And I'm just trying to get into a more square shape rather than this rectangular shape. There we are. Alright, and there we go, we're just about ready to work with that. Okay, and now you want to cut off pieces um, perpendicular to the stripes that you've made. And just trim it so that it's nice and even. The first trim you're just going to take and you're going to put to the side. Okay, and then I just, I'm actually going to cut from this side because I need to be able to see what I'm doing. You kind of cut each piece about a millimeter thick. Like so. And just cut the whole way up the length of your piece because that will just make the entire process a lot easier than if you were just uh, cutting and then laying it out and then cutting and then laying it out. There we go. Now I'm just going to pick that up, pop it to the side. I just want it enough that you can see what I'm doing. And you're going to take a piece, and you're going to end up with something quite interesting, such as that. And you take the next piece and you make sure that it mirrors. And you line it up so it's like a mini Natasha bead. And I'm not sure if this technique's been done if already. Um, I just was playing around with some scraps the other day and I found this out. So if there is someone who has already created this, let me know. And you'll just take another two, line those up, and this is important, if you don't line it up it doesn't really look all that good. And then you'll take these two and you'll pop them together and they're not going to match. And then you'll just continue doing that the entire way up. And now this veneer, this bunch of clay doesn't look like it's the best one for this. It's a little bit too busy. But here's an example of one that looks really nice if you just continue uh, going up the length. And I'll finish this one up while we wait for that other one to cool. And we'll see 
how it looks. And there we go. That's just about what you're going to end up with. I'm just going to pick that up and move that roughly into the middle so you can see. Now the best thing to do now is to grab a piece of plain printing paper. And give it a thorough burnish. Just to get those seams smoothed out. Okay, I'm just going to look at the other side. The other side doesn't always turn out uh, great because you can't actually see to line it up. This one actually turned out quite nice. I'm just going to roll that with my roller and then I'm going to go in and smooth those seams just a little bit more because I had a few more left. There we are. Now just give that a roll. And it just creates a really interesting effect. And I like to just trim off the top because that generally doesn't turn out so nice. And the bottom, each of those sides. And here's what the back looks like. And you can see the back doesn't turn out quite as nice because you don't get the lining up as good. Uh, but the front turned out really quite nice. So there you can see it's quite an interesting technique to play around with when it comes to leftovers. So anyway, while we were doing that, our piece has finished cooling see it's nice um, and pretty hard it should be slightly flexible if it is baked properly uh, but in general that is what you should be left with okay now because we smoothed it off when it was in the um, uh, before it went into the oven we don't have to worry about sanding at the moment then you want to pick up the next one and just make sure to, this time you have to really make sure to smooth off the edges the other one we didn't smooth off the edges because we can just sand those later. But with the smaller ones, you need to make sure that you smooth off the edges. Okay, and I just want to decide whether I want to line it up like that, roughly. Or, if I want to get that square, have that in the middle like so. Hmm. I think I'm going to do it like this. Okay, and then we're just going to spend some time positioning that into the right spot. The best way to make sure that it is in the right spot is to smooth it down into what you think is the right spot and then go at it from different angles. You want to go from each corner. So these ones corners and these corners and just look and if it doesn't look right at any one of those corners then you might need to adjust it so I can see I need to adjust it just a touch around okay. and that looks about right then just go with your finger and just in gentle smoothing motions you'll smooth that down. You don't want to be pressing too hard. Just gentle motions, smoothing that out. There's a little spot there that I want to see if I can get rid of. Yeah. Okay. And then that is going to go into the oven for about half an hour at pretty much recommended temperature and then we can apply this one and while it's in the oven I'm going to take our cane here I'm going to go start cutting out some really nice small pieces and it's going to end up being our backing for our piece You can see I'm kind of rotating this cane as I'm slicing, just so that it doesn't get squished too much. 
and that should do for the moment. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to put that together at random. It doesn't need to be specific. Okay. And then just squish it to get those pieces together. And we will probably give it a sand as well. Just continue squishing pieces together until they form enough space for us to use it as a veneer to cover just the back of our piece. There we are. Then take a piece of paper and press in really nice and hard. You want to smooth that out. Also use your roller to do that. Okay, and that smoothed it out roughly. Now I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to gently go over the surface around areas where we've got some smudging or some overlap just to clean it up a bit. Because although we're going to sand it, we might as well clean it up for ourselves before we bake it because it's generally always easier anyway. So that's just going to clean up any little bits of metal leaf that are in the wrong spot. It's going to clean up any smudges. And it's just going to make the entire thing look much crisper and cleaner and in the long run prettier. There we go. Okay, and I think I've got everything. There's just this one spot here. Alright, and then just give it a final once over. And when you're good, just pick up that, bring over a piece of paper again, and give it a final burnish. Like so. Then we're going to run it through a pasta machine on our one millimeter thick setting. just going to stretch it out and it's going to make it thin because we don't want it to be too thick. You can see there's a bit of sparkle in there, it's completely random but quite pretty at the same time. Okay, so just put that off to the side and we can use that in the next step. Okay, and it's out of the oven and I've let it cool for a little while. So now we are ready to apply our backing first and then we will apply our top piece. So just grab a little bit of liquid clay. And I'm just using Kato Clear Liquid Clay. And I only want a little bit. Just going to spread that around. And this is just going to make it slightly sticky. And you don't need to do that when bonding the layers at the top because we're going to be putting resin over that and that's going to give it a really secure bond. So you don't have to worry about that. Then we're going to bring over our veneer that we prepared. Now I'm going to start from one side and press it down. And it's important to start from one side because then you're pressing out air bubbles. Okay. Then I will just use my tissue blade to roughly trim away that excess. I'm leaving a little bit because we need to smush it down. There we go. So you need to smush it down on the edge there, and that will generally cut away uh, any excess left. And you're going to have some slight smearing around the edge, that's fine. That will get sanded off. And that's going to give you a nice clean beveled edge to be very comfortable. And there we go. Then just run your finger around the edge to just give it a final smooth. Like so and that is quite pretty on its own. I mean you could wear it just like that if you wanted.
and I'm just going to run my fingers over it just to smooth out any fingerprints that might be there Okay, and then we are ready to apply our last little piece I'm just going to line that up looks like it's in the right spot Okay, do we'll shift it around so that it sits exactly in the right spot. It's got to line up with those corners. Okay, there we go. Then when you're done, gently burnish it onto the surface. And then you will bake that for a full hour at pretty much recommended temperature and actually what we can do is I just want to decide before I do that what our back how we're going to strengthen uh, because we might actually want to put a bale on or we might want to drill so I'm just going to decide that quickly okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it the way it is I am going to bake it and then what we're going to do is we'll drill a hole at the top over here and we'll slip a jump ring through and then we'll attach a jump ring to this loop over here and then we'll have pieces of our cord going out like that and I think that will be quite an interesting way to finish it off okay so I'm just going to go pop that into the oven for a full hour and then we can get to finishing it alright so now this is out of the oven and you can see how beautiful that looks and we also have the back so now I just want to give the back a light sand just because we've got a few smudges around the edges so we're just going to grab some 400 grit polishing papers and this will be very quick I don't need to worry about sanding the rest I just want to sand along the edges here just to get rid of any uh, smears that might be there don't need to worry about the front either And just give the edges a light sand as well, just to get rid of any sharp edges that might be there. Okay, and that looks like it's good. Just feel around the edges, and they're all good as well. Okay, so now we're ready to move on to applying our resin. And you can see how easy that was to finish off. But that all relies on how well you finish it off before you put it in the oven. So the more time you spend on it before you put it in the oven, the less sanding you're going to have to do towards the end. Okay, so this is the brand of resin that I am using today. And I'm just going to be using a UV specific brush. It's a UV dedicated brush, that's the right word. I'm just going to paint the top one first. Yeah, a decent coat resin. Then I'll paint around the edges here to paint the next one over. And you can see how that brings that metallic colour to life. I might have to give this two coats. We'll see how the resin spreads and how it behaves. Sometimes you have to give it two coats. And more often than not one is enough and I'll just continue applying resin and checking that it's spreading evenly until I've put resin over the entire thing okay and that's how it looks you can see it's got a nice shine to it so now I'm going to put that in the UV light for about half an hour to make sure that it's properly cured and then we will attend to our back all right so this has been in the UV light for roughly an hour um, in combin so it was half an hour on the front and then I repeated the process on the back I gave it a resin on the back and now that spent half an hour uh, there as well so it's nice and hard there's no stickiness and it feels nice to the touch now what you want to do is you want to figure out what is going to be the top of your pendant what looks best I'm just flipping it around and this I think is going to be the top of my pendant up here 
So then you want to grab a drill and position it right at the top there. And drill through that resin. Like so. And then go around on the other side and do the same process. Gently drill through that resin. And this is just so that we don't encounter too much cracking with the resin because uh, that can happen quite easily. And just position your finger there so you can feel when the drill comes out. And gently start drilling towards that hole. And once you start feeling the drill come out, just clean up that side of the hole, go to the other side, and gently start drilling as well. And you don't want to be pressing too hard because your finger's there. And the last thing you want is to accidentally poke your finger. And there we are, that's a nice clean hole. Like so. Then I'm going to bring over some nice largish bales. And I sell these on my Etsy shop dressing by design. They're fairly large. And we're going to insert this. And then close that over. I actually think I'm going to need pliers to do this. I'll try and do it by hand to start with, just to get it in there. So I think I'm going to need pliers. Okay, here's the pliers. So I just want to grab that with my pliers and press so that it's locked in there. Give it a good press, make sure that it's well stuck over there. And that gives us a nice, neat spot for our piece to hang. It's a little hard for me to get it right here, but basically when it hangs it will sit just right. Now we want to decide on what sorry ribbon we're going to be using. I've got this beautiful purple one, oh not purple, grey one. Or I've got this kind of um, oh, almost latte cut. So we want to decide which one looks the best. I kind of think they both look quite nice. Okay, so after deliberation, I've decided that we'll go with the grey. Like both, but the grey is the one that I like the best, I think. Okay, so I'm just going to insert that, like so, and that's going to be one. And I've got another one over here. And actually before we do that, what you want to do is you want to just run your hand along this. Just to get rid of any extra little bits of thread that are there. Because a lot of the time, uh, Soria Ribbon has extra little threads. Like, here's a bunch. So you want to just run your hand along. So just get rid of them as much as you can before you start. And then we're going to thread one side through. And that's going to be half of our necklace. And we'll do the same on the other side in a minute. And I'm just going to trim this top over here. And then before we join it together, I'll take that and I can use that to see how long this piece needs to be. I'm going to start on this end by trimming away that end, which is not quite so nice. We've got two pieces. Now I'm just going to fluff this one out of it because that other one's a little bit more, f um, not as crinkled as this one. So you want the two to look similar. And you can actually iron this if you wanted to uh, make it a little bit more or less um, organic, but that's completely up to you, of course. And then all you do is you'll just take one, you'll loop it through, 
put both those ends together and squish them up nice and tight as tight as you can and then I'm going to grab this cord end that I have here I'm going to force this in and it can take a little bit of persuasion but you should be able to get in Fuss with that and see if I can get it in. If not, we'll just put a separate piece on each end. Okay, so that just wasn't cooperating with me. So we're just going to put one piece on each end. Like so. And I need to jump these um, round nose pliers to help me do this. Because my other pliers are too thick. Just give it a really good squish. Make sure that you've got it on there properly. Then give a gentle yank, and if it's stuck, that's great. Then repeat on this end. There we are. Then those two we will join for the jump ring. Just close that up and then we'll take another jump ring it up, link that onto this one and half of our clasp is going to go on there. There we go. And that's one side done. Okay, then you want to repeat on the other side. And there we go. That's basically how the pendant is going to look. And now it's a little difficult to show you exactly what it's going to look like. You'll be able to see in the photos before the project. Uh, but it's a little difficult to show you now because this is not being stretched as far as it should be. Uh, because of the weight of the pendant. It's a little hard to show you when it's just sitting kind of flat on the tile like this. So uh, It does look better when it is actually hanging from a... Uh, stand or if you're wearing it it does look better uh, because the sari ribbon gets stretched out nicely and the whole thing hangs nice and symmetrical so it's a little hard to show on the tile but hopefully you can get an idea of how this looks so that is basically it for today's tutorial and I do hope that you enjoyed it I loved showing you how to create this pendant it was a lot of fun hopefully you enjoyed it as well and keep in mind that you can use any mukume gana you want. You could even use just about any um, any type of veneer for this as well. The technique works really well for it. And uh, have fun creating all sorts of different uh, backings. You can see the back looks really cool on this one. You could even wear it just like that. And I actually want to bring over two more projects that I did with the uh, leftovers. Let me just bring those. And here are the two projects that I did. Here's one. Basically I took the leftover of that mic shift and I used a ripple blade to insert these two pieces of the Mukumegane that were left. And here is the back using that Natasha bead veneer that we made. You can see that it's got a nice sand and buff on it. And I've done lots of donut tutorials on page, on um, it, excuse me, on YouTube or on my website jessimatutorials.com. So if you want to check that out. Uh, there will be a link to that in the description below the video and you'll be able to see how to make these. It's very simple and very easy. You can see that. And here's another one that I used basically the same way except that it's a bit of a reverse where I used a small insert of the mic shift along with the Mukumegano. And here is the back where I used the um, Natasha bead uh, veneer that we made. So those are two other options that you could have. Uh, you don't necessarily have to make a complicated project like we did today. You could make something very simple like that. But all in all, they look, they all look very pretty. So, I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know in the comments below. Feel free to play around with different veneers. Um, 
and different techniques you can take the veneers that I've shown today and you can use them in different projects such as these and you can see they turn out really nicely and just in all have fun let me know what you thought and I will see you in the next tutorial bye for now